Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Pencils and Lipstick. I am Kat Caldwell, and today is January 8th, and this is episode 212. Today is the second week of January 2024. Remember when you are writing your date that the year has changed. And we are going to continue this talk of creativity and writing in this year. I want you guys to embrace every aspect of your creativity as writers. And who better to help us do this than my good friend, Emily A. Myers. She is an amazing person as well as writer. Um, She has quite a few books out there. She has romantic suspense, contemporary romance, she has won awards. She has been runner up for awards. It's pretty amazing. Her debut novel, The Truth About Unspeakable Things, was um, an award winner already. She had a great debut novel. And then she's coming out, has come out with last week, I Still Have Love to Give, a book of poetry. Now, like Emily, I bet a lot of you guys out there write creatively in many different ways. Whether you publish in all the genres you write in or not is probably a business decision, right? Or just personal decision. But I think that there are ways that we can embrace the creativity that we have within ourselves. You know, painters paint, sculptors sculpt, and writers write, right? So we can write in many different um, different genres, different um modes and manners. And this has a lot to do with where we are in our life. And so Emily and I talk about not only creativity, but mental health and how to go back and forth with between genres and why poetry is beneficial. And I am happy to say that she has been embraced um, by her fans, by readers through this poetry, which I think is amazing. So I want you guys to take this as encouragement for all the other things that you write that you might not have published, or you might think maybe you're not publishing them because you think people won't react properly to them. Maybe you think poetry is dead. I want you guys to be encouraged that all ways of writing, all the creative fields are open to you. And getting it out there is a brave thing to do and most likely will be better received than you think. I want us to walk into 2022 really willing to embrace um, every aspect of our creativity, of um, the stories that we have in our heads and the many thousands of ways that we can get them onto paper. You know, you don't just have to write third person deep perspective or first person deep perspective. There are many ways that you can get that story onto paper that will be very different and will speak in different ways to your readers. So without further ado, let's talk to Emily A. Myers. You can find the links in the show notes below and be sure to check out her book, I Still Have Love to Give. That is her latest poetry book. But of course, also, if you are a romantic suspense reader, check out The Truth About Unspeakable Things, number one in the unspeakable duology. Let's talk to Emily. Okay, perfect. Hi, Emily. I'm so excited to have you back. It's been a while since we've chatted. Yeah, it has been. I'm really excited. Can you, um, before we talk about what is new and and exciting in your life, can you let everyone know just a little bit, like, what do you write and who, who you are? Yeah, so I'm Emily A. Myers. I'm a romantic suspense author primarily, but... This year, instead of moving forward with some fiction writing, I decided to do more of a therapy project for me. It was therapy for me. It's uh, poetry meets self-help, and that's what we're excited to talk about today. Yeah, but you can find me um, on all social media, primarily Instagram and TikTok, at Emily Myers Author. Myers is M-Y-E-R-S. Yeah, and just reach out to me via my website, emilyamyers.com, if you want to talk about uh, publishing, marketing, social media, or my book specifically. Happy to talk to you about any of that. Very cool. So how how was this pivot into... um from fiction into, po- I mean, I guess poetry, it's still a very creative process, right? Mm-hmm. But um, ha- have you always written poetry or was that a big jump? Yeah. So I've always written different things. Like even when I was a little kid, I would write songs, 
Um, and in college, I majored in English, but actually the majority of the classes that I took were poetry classes. Okay. Um, yeah, because we didn't have a teacher offering a lot of fiction classes. Um, so poetry's always been part of my life. It's always been an outlet that I turn to in times of high stress or when I need to get things off my chest, process my emotions. So I actually started writing poems uh, that did find their way into this collection a couple years ago when I was going through my divorce. Yeah. Um, so not all of those made it in, but some of them did. And, and that ended up being kind of the start of this collection before I even knew that this would exist. Okay. And this year I, um, I basically started dating again for the first time. And so there was a lot to, a lot of emotions, a lot of things to process, a lot of more work to do in therapy on my part to, to get to a good place, to be able to do all of that and be comfortable with that. So I was writing poetry again. And so this new book that I have is just basically representative of years of this heartbreak to hope journey. Yeah, that's amazing. I, I really like, um, I mean, I think you're really brave to do it because I, th I think a lot of writers have another medium that they might dabble in, you know, but to bring it out and to like poetry is really personal a lot of times. Yeah. So um, <laughs> it, I always tell people like, I can't, edit your poetry because it's it's just so I don't know the rules first of all you know there are some rules but it's very personal like how do you tell someone to change that you know like no it is it is what it is so I've interviewed a couple of poets I just find you guys very courageous and awesome <laughs> so, so how yeah. is um I'm thinking like how how do you think it it helps writers like your writer how, brain um how do you think that helps you just with like i know personally i can see how that outlet would help you but do you think it it connects to your writing and to your ability to write your books and get into your characters um do you think that poetry helps you in that way um i think for me as a writer I always have words inside of me that need to come out. So, but it's, it's just such a big undertaking to write a fiction book um, because there's so much more to it. There's the world building and there's tracking your plot, tracking characters, maintaining voice. There's so many things. And that is, it's not something that I, could do earlier this year because my mind was so focused on other things. I think mm. when I'm writing a book, I have to be so locked in on that, okay. that it's not actually for me personally, it's not a stress relief. It's not a way for me to process my emotions. Right. It's actually a way for me to get lost in another character and like step outside of myself. So for me, poetry is my way of processing my emotions but it's it's strange because the other day I was reading back over a book um, that we actually haven't talked about either this came out at the end of last year it was a mafia romance right and I was reading and then I read the some of the poems right after and I realized oh my gosh I'm using some of the same phrases oh, and cool. some of the same like tone in, in the writing, describing my life and describing the character's life. So that was kind of a surreal experience for sure. So it kind of crosses over. Maybe you're able to access emotions through a different point of view, almost like, cause you're in that yeah. character. I mean, our brains are so amazing, but I think you, ha you have a really good point because being an indie author is a lot like probably being a traditional as well, but we focus on indies here. Like we were talking before you have the marketing, you have the book, you have to deal with reviews. Like everyone says you have to grow a thick skin, but easier said than done, right? <laughs> like, yeah. as you said, we, um, we have to be committed to the book that we're in. So it's not as much as we love writing, it doesn't take care of the mental health, right? Like right. it doesn't, actually take care of us it still is kind of work 
right? Yeah. Like, and I mean, um, let's see a couple years ago when I was going through my divorce is actually when I wrote my second book, which we talked about in my first interview found by the unspeakable. And that book took me eight months to write just the writing part, not the editing and the anything else, just writing versus the first book took two months to write. Mm. And so I was just like hell bent on like writing that book because I was like, I'm not going to like let this personal experience derail my goals, but it was a, it was a struggle. It really was. And what I've learned is that when I'm not in a good place mentally, I cannot write the way that I want to. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's just draining when a book takes that long to write. So I would rather just like take a few months off and not write and then come back and know that when I do start it, I'll probably end up finishing it at about the same time that I would have if I would have started it three months prior. Oh, that's such a good point, though, because you're taking the time to take care of yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, I think in this weird indie world, we're always talk, talking about getting more books out. But quite frankly, if you can't focus, like you said, because anyone who hasn't finished their book or ha- is listening and hasn't written a book, like you said, it's just the, that's just the writing that doesn't include the editing, the formatting, the marketing, the like mm-hmm. just getting it out. And if you're done with your book by that point, you might not even end up marketing it. You yeah. might just be like, oh, I'm done. So then when you when you took the time to dive into the poetry, like was most of the poetry written and you were putting it together? You just decided to put it together as a book or did you take time out and you didn't even know you were going to do a book? Like how- right. So okay. the majority of this book was written this year. There's okay. only a couple of poems from years ago when I was going through my divorce, because it's actually uh, three sections. Okay. So the first section kind of deals with the heartbreak. So it's like me reflecting on that divorce. So some of those were from a couple of years ago. The middle section is all completely this year, like me and, and my dating life and all of that. And then the third section is kind of a culmination of like what I've learned in my experience and what I've learned in therapy. And it's describing the type of love that I want, which Mm. I think can be helpful for someone out there who, you know, maybe they're trying to figure out what kind of love they want. And so if they can hear someone else describe it, maybe they're like, oh, I do like that. Or I do want that. Of course. Um, And then actually in the back of the book, we have a survival guide, which is uh, multiple parts. And it's, it's everything that I've learned in therapy um, about, you know, dating apps and rejection and heartbreak and unhealthy right. attachments, all the stuff. Oh so, my goodness. yeah. So the majority of this was written this year. And, um, but I really didn't figure out that it would be what it is until this summer. Really? So when, when did you decide that you were going to share this? Because again, it's personal, like it's, that's a pretty personal journey. Um, what, what made you want to share it with people? Well, okay. So earlier, like in the spring, um, I was writing more than just about this. I was diving into some things that I had experienced in childhood. I was going to write about losing my dad, uh, to cancer. I was going to have just a book that was just everything. Mm -hmm. And it was just this cumulative therapy project. But when I got to writing about those things, I was like, "Mm." I started to think, oh, do I want my family to read this? Do I want to deal with these repercussions? Like I just, you know, I just started second guessing. And so then I dialed it back and I was like, okay, let me look at what I do have. And that's when I realized everything was really about love and heartbreak. And I was like, okay, from a marketing standpoint, that's a very clear um, description of what this collection is. So this is going to be easier to market than something that might include love and grief and loss and like just a lot of different things. So it was probably over the summer when I had that realization of, okay, this is what it's going to be. Um, 
I am going to publish this. And, and the reason why I decided to publish it is because I thought if I had a daughter and like, let's say, God forbid, I were to pass away young and she were to grow up and have to go through her dating experiences and trying to find the love of her life without me or without someone to help her, I would want her to have this. I would, right. I, I, you know, I think that there's a lot of really good value here. And if it can help people, then that is why I'm publishing it. Oh, I love that reason that that that's such a beautiful reason because I, I think that we have the ability to process stuff as writers, if we're willing to put it out there in in writing, you know, like a lot <laughs> of people journal, a lot of people overwrite their books, because really, they're processing through it, right. So the, yeah. the, the fact that you're willing to put down like just that processing journey of like, yeah, it takes it takes a while, especially after heartache to realize what do I want? Like, do you even get to ask that question? You know, like even getting to that point of like accepting that you can choose that just being able to see that process is, is pretty amazing. I, I love that you have that reason for it. So uh, when you decided that, um, was it pretty easy to put it together? Did it just sort of, um, it was easy to choose the, the, poems or was it quite a bit of work to decide what went in and what went out? Um, I went in with the idea of I am going to write what I want to write and I'm not going to censor myself. And so I just wrote, 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 wrote with the understanding that if I felt uncomfortable with something after the fact, I didn't have to publish it. Right. So I wrote everything that I wanted to. And then um, I started to just basically format it in a chronological order. The, the way that the book is formatted, it really does tell a story from beginning to end. And after each section of poetry, I even have a lesson learned. Um, like I have like a lesson learned. Oh, you really can't see, but then I have a commentary section, which is me oh, cool. reflecting. So it really is, even if you were just to read the commentary, you right. would have a complete story yeah. of what has happened and what I've learned. And so there were poems that I did cut because I thought, well, maybe this was too offensive to the, uh, and obviously there are no names there, right. <laughs> but you know, people who know who I've been with are going to know potentially who it's about, but you know, but the, the grand world is not going to know. And so right. I, you know, but I'm, I'm still mindful of that, you know, like of how would this make this person feel? Do I feel comfortable with, um, certain people reading this? And also, um, one thing to note too, is that, you know, this has been a healing journey. And so while maybe there were some poems that were written with a little more anger or feist to them, it's like, okay, now at this point, is it worth publishing that? So there were some things that I included because I felt that the reader could really relate. And maybe the reader needs right. that. Maybe they need that for their own, like, yeah, you know, yeah. but then also for me, I had to be like, well, you know, I'm not necessarily going to publish like the worst of it, you know, <laughs> <laughs> um, because I'm beyond that at this point, but right. Right. Um, yeah. So there were some poems that I, I cut and then really just, you know, the lineup thinking about the chronological events of when things happened, you know, I went back and forth with it a couple of times, but it wasn't that difficult. That's a, do you think that your idea of storytelling helped with this, this project? Absolutely. It's, it's weird because when the collection was finally done, like the, the, the lineup was set, I was like, this really does read like a romance novel. Like That's it so really cool. does. Like it's in poet, poetic form and then right. it has the nonfiction aspects to it. But if you know, for, for me, it's nonfiction for someone else out there, 
they're reading about someone else's life. Right. So for them, it might be an escape or something. And so it really does read like a romance novel. The only difference is I don't end up with the love of my life at the end. <laughs> you know what though? Like love stories really, I think are about deciding what kind of love the character wants. You know, I mean, we want as a reader to know that they end up together, but it's because they've realized like they're worth that love they are or that's the person that they want because of these reasons you know and unfortunately real life is not always clean cut <laughs> they don't and, you know and i keep telling myself like for example in uh one of the books that i've written there's like you know a time jump at the end of the book before they end up actually getting their happily ever after and so i'm like you know this is not fiction. This poetry collection is not fiction. My life is still happening. My story is still happening. So who knows? Maybe a year from now, after my time jump, I will have that person. But this has really been about, I guess, truly understanding what I want from a relationship um, and, and also just kind of like what I've learned in this entire process. Right. And so how how do you think it would compare? It sounds a lot like a memoir, but in poetry form, but you said that you decided to not write sort of that nonfiction ish, maybe like the more standard nonfiction memoir. Um, like, how do you think it, it compares with, do you think you'll go back to trying to read to write another nonfiction? Or are you um, just, I guess, happy with like, this format like maybe this will be a format that you um return to um i i really really love this format i think that poetry has a way of connecting with people unlike anything else mm. um i mean and it has those aspects of a traditional nonfiction book with the commentary but i think I think this book is like the the perfect go between for people who enjoy fiction and people who enjoy nonfiction because right. the poetry has those that just that lyrical beauty that just resonates with your soul and then right. the all of the reflection that happens in the commentary and the survival guide is going to you know actually it's almost like it does that literary analysis for you. You don't have to mm -hmm. sit there and think about every single thing. Like you can enjoy it for what it is. And then I'm going to explain it, like explain everything that's happened, you know, after it's over. I really, I just really enjoy yeah. that. And, and maybe in the future, I mean, I'm definitely open to writing I know that I'll write more poetry. I mean, even if it's just for me, I know that I'll write it, but I would be open to doing another book in a similar format like this at some point. Um, it, but again, it would have to be about something that's very personal to me and very important to me because I am not the person who's gonna go out and sit in a field of flowers and write poetry about the flower. Like, that's <laughs> not me. Like I'm writing about things that have actually happened in my life. And honestly, it's almost like songs. Okay. So that's, that's, cool. that's where I'm at. Okay, that, I love that. So if, if somebody's listening to this and they're like, that just sounds like something that I need. Like I need to <laughs> have some self therapy. Like is there a way to start poetry? Like what, how would you tell people if they haven't had any background in songwriting or poetry writing? Um, are there rules? Are there places that people should go? <laughs> what, are, what are your thoughts on that? Technically, um, there are some rules. There, there are some standard poetic forms. However, I do not follow them. Um, I write, free verse. And right. so free verse is, is practically rule free. Um, so basically just start writing, like okay. uh, just start writing what you feel. And then I think you'll start to 
um, as you write, you know, you'll figure out words that rhyme to kind of put at the end of each line. And, but really it's not that difficult. I mean, I will literally read, I'm trying to find like a section that might, I could read just to give an example. Um, <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna read this one little tiny <laughs> section. This one is uh, from A Good Enough Reason. Okay. Our predicament became too complicated. Too many hours spent waiting for text, too much desperation for that good sex, only for me to feel even lonelier when it would end. I got attached to a man who only ever saw me as a friend. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I mean, I don't love that you went through that, but I love how, <laughs> like, how much is in just that little bit, how much you can relate to that. Oh, yeah. my goodness. So uh, you saying a lot of it is just practicing putting, probably opening up your emotions onto actual ink and, and paper. And then as you do it, like finding that flow, like, is it difficult yeah. to let go of the grammar that we're so trying to honestly to teach ourselves? Honestly, for me, no. I mean, I wrote all of this practically on my phone, on my couch. Whereas when I'm writing a novel, I'm in my office at my computer mm. and I've got a bunch of screens open because I've got setting notes and I've got character descriptions and it's it's a whole thing. It's a process. Right. But right. with poetry, it's very like, I don't have to think. I just write what I feel and I'm typing it out on my phone. It doesn't have to be perfect. When I actually go in to format it into the appropriate stanzas, you know, then I'll run it through uh something like grammarly or pro writing aid um you want to make sure that like if you're referencing the name of like a, a movie or something you're going to put that in italics right. or if you're referencing you know in the nonfiction parts i reference a book that i was reading at the time and so you're going to format things like that appropriately okay. you're going to have appropriate grammar and punctuation in the nonfiction aspects, but the poetry itself, it's it's free. And I would say um, if you've ever, what is it? It's like open mic. I'm trying to think of what the word is. It's like a when you go to a poetry reading and people are just, I can't remember what oh, the word it, is. Is it free flow? Is that what it's, it's basically, it's, it's there's a similar. word, it's something like that, but it's like literally just talk the way that you would talk, just type it out in your phone and it, then, you'll, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So really just getting to that place. Maybe, maybe for some, it would even be easier to dictate out just like the, yeah, you, know, the you could definitely. Interesting. And I think for me, because I write romance I think I just have a very lyrical romantic way of thinking and expressing that maybe not everyone has but everyone has their own voice and when you're writing a poetry collection that is truly therapy for you you should write it in your voice like if you have a dry sense of humor or if you you know use a lot of profanity or whatever the case is write it like you basically. Right. And that's yeah. what will make your work unique. Yeah. I, I love that. Um, so do you, you mentioned uh, marketing before, cause you're an indie writer and you've had to do this. How, mm -hmm. how does it differ? Or does it differ to, to put out a poetry book? It, it does a little bit. So um, I've had a lot of fun with creating promotional graphics and reels in the same vein that I would for a fiction novel. So like I have a Pinterest board with inspiration um, inspired by the poems. Mm. Um, and so, you know, I've on my Instagram, I will have graphics made and, and you could look at that graphic and be like, is that for a poetry collection or a dark romance? Like it's similar, but when you're actually reaching out to reviewers, you're thinking beyond people who read books. You're thinking okay. about people who are, you know, 
experts in the actual nonfiction industry. Okay. So, well, the nonfiction aspects of your book. So like my book being about divorce and dating and mental health and, and self-love things like that. I'm also yeah. looking at people who, you know, are writing books in those fields or doing podcasts right. in those fields, different, like dating coaches, divorce, you know, uh, experts, different things like that. So it is thinking beyond just a book reviewer. It is really trying to expand your audience. Mm -hmm. And so just like I'm reaching out and doing different podcast interviews, I'm also going to look into doing some guest blogging opportunities, right. um, you know, writing about the more the nonfiction side, like the advice side. Okay. Yeah. So you're, you have to like our book swaps, you have to swap differently. Like you just have to sort of tweak, I guess, your thought process on who you're going to look for. Maybe not other authors, maybe other authors, but maybe just like bloggers or experts or podcasts who deal with that and have, yeah, that's yeah, that's a lot of work, though, Emily. <laughs> it is. And, you know, it's kind of like launching two books in one because I'm right. still reaching out to the people who have reviewed my fiction books, people yeah. who have, you know, been followers of me since the beginning. And thankfully, some of them have, um, you know, agreed to uh, review this book as well, just because they're supporters of me, even if they okay. don't normally read poetry. So it's like, right. I have those connections. Um, but I'm also trying to expand, um, my audience and, um, well, you might find new readers as well for fiction, right? Um, I'm, I'm hoping, yeah. I'm hoping, um, and How because, and that's the thing is like, when you think about someone who reads mafia romance or romantic suspense, like they may read other things too, but even if they don't, like, I think that sadly, almost anyone can relate to a form of heartbreak and right. a dating experience and love. And so if they're willing to give it a, a chance, be, even though it's poetry and some aren't, but if they are, I think anyone can find value in this just because of what it's about. Because right. like I said, it is different than a standard book of poetry that might be about nature or whatever. Right. I'm sorry. Yes. I don't mean to diss any nature <laughs> poetry writers, but like it is different. <laughs> right. It's definitely, it's an Emily Myers. I mean, you have suspenseful romance, you have mafia romance, <laughs> like that is not you know contemporary light-hearted ski patrol romance like that is <laughs> this is you right so most likely the readers of your romance will probably dig like really gritty raw down to earth this is you know this is my experience um because yeah. they might be going to your your fiction for that as well like right because we go to fiction to see if somebody else got a different experience from what we got or like I don't know when we're sad we want to watch sad stuff or <laughs> yeah we're kind, of, we're kind of like that um I was gonna ask you something um because we were talking about marketing and your so yeah so how because you kind of write on the darker side now that you've gone through some self-therapy um has that changed like would you were you afraid that you were like going to get healed and all better and then your your romance was going to change at all or or are Honestly, you still able to to write that it's weird because i'm in the process now of figuring out what my next steps are fiction wise and there was a hot minute where i was like maybe i should write something a little more contemporary maybe i could dabble in romantic comedy that'll be easier for me long term but my writing just naturally goes suspenseful and dark and so I'm in the process of you know thinking about what my next book will be and in thinking about that it's like I was trying to force myself to make it contemporary 
but my mind naturally was like oh my god I see how this could be mafia right now or I see how this could be <laughs> dark romantic suspense right now and so I just think that's probably where my storytelling is just gonna keep me good I, I think most people will say with relief you know like sometimes as writers think we have to be the angsty people that never work through our stuff because what if it changes our art form and like mm -hmm. it, our whole series goes off the rail because you know um we're we're all better now and you know whatever i'm not sure that we're ever all better but you know <laughs> i think it's one of the reasons why maybe sometimes we don't want to touch things right but does has it helped you taking this time off and just working on yourself and mentally has it helped you you think with then confronting your next writing project i do think so for sure i feel like mentally i think i'm in a lot better place than i was um throughout the better part of this year and i mean i would say even things that happened like within the past two months, like w even two months ago, I wasn't where I am now. Mm. So it is still pretty recent, but I do feel like I'm getting to a good place to where I can focus on other things. And, you know, I, I am excited to start thinking about another book. I mean, I have so many ideas, but it's really just about deciding what's the best direction to move in for longevity, because as a self-published author, it's hard to just write one book and not follow that up with a book that's either going to be a part of that series or in the same genre, because you don't have a lot of read through and you're not continuously building your audience. But so that's what I'm really hoping to do is like, whether that's expanding the mafia world that I created with, um, the book that I released last year or just starting fresh, mm. like, but starting with the intention of writing a series. So that's what I'm trying to figure out right now. And of course, there's that debate between do I continue to self-publish? Do I try to get a traditional book deal? But it's difficult. That's why I was thinking about contemporary because I don't right. think that romantic suspense mafia romance is as accepted in the traditional market. And yeah. then you also think there's so many authors competing in that sphere right now who are self-publishing and who right. are putting out multiple books a year. I don't think that it's as represented in the traditional market because I don't think that they can compete right. with the self-published authors who are killing it. Yeah. So it's like, do I put in the work and try to become one of those authors who are killing it in the indie world? And that's probably what I'm going to try to do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love though how you're, you're thinking through this because I was, I've been talking to a couple authors um, and you've brought up business and marketing and what we have to do. Right. And that's, these are the questions I think once you get a couple of like your baby books out, you know, like, oh, I just have this idea and they're coming. Like you said, your first one took two months and like, it's exciting. Yeah. And um, then you get to the point where you're like, oh, I really need to like make this a business. Yes. <laughs> and that comes with so many things like thinking through what are my next steps? I love how you thought about it for your poetry book as well. Like marketing wise, okay, maybe I only focus on love and that's an easier it's not only just that it's easier to sell, it's easier for readers to understand what they're picking up, right? Like that's Absolutely. really what marketing is. So I love how you're already thinking of this because I think we can't talk about it enough <laughs> in the <laughs> indie author world. Cause it's, cause you're, are you, are you also still working full time? You, I think no, I time. actually write full time. That's amazing. Oh, I love that. Okay. But still, you got to keep you. That's even more pressure. I feel like you have to, yeah, make a dollar to to write, right? So yeah, there's a lot more to it. And do you think also just with like I've read a couple stories of indie authors where they do put out four, five, six, seven books a year, and then all yes. of a sudden you stop hearing from them, and most of them it's because they hit a wall. And they just like mentally and physically, they just couldn't continue. 
because I do think it's it's a lot to ask of people, right? So do you think that this um, this time that you've had with yourself, like I went through therapy like four years ago, sometimes I think about going back and just, mm-hmm. <laughs> just for kicks to escape my children and their homework, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, but do you think that it it will change the way that you approach writing and how how much writing you do or how much how you approach business and how much business you do or like structure your day, um, things like that. Yeah. And it's something that I've been thinking about for a while. Um, now, you know, I like, there's a, there's a mafia romance writer who's one of the best. She's incredible. She puts out probably at least five books a year. And I reached out to her at one point. I was like, how, how long does it take you to write a book? And, you know, and she told me, I want to say maybe a month. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Yeah. And, and her books are full length. I mean, they're going to be 300 plus print pages. So they're not just short novellas and I've read a lot of them and they do have good, um, world development and, 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 you know, it's not just a little, you know, nothing book basically. Um, and so, but I know that I cannot do that. Like for me, I probably will spend at least a month, you know, planning a book, you know, planning a book, getting to know my characters, building the world. You know, I'm a very in-depth planner, not like every chapter is planned out, but I have to fully engross myself in the world before I start writing that first chapter and actually physically writing, you know, I would say I can probably only get, there have been days where I've written 6,000 words, but that's towards the end of a book where I'm just trying to finish. That's like two chapters in one. So typically for me, it's going to be a 3000 words or less a day. Yeah. And when you're talking about books that are, let's just roughly say a hundred thousand words. I mean, my longest book is closer to 130,000, but let's just say roughly a hundred thousand words, you know, I mean, and let's say you're working five days a week, you know, mm-hmm. because I'm, I'm sorry, no one should be working every single day. No. <laughs> so it's like, it's going to take you months to write that. And mm-hmm. then you have to factor in your editing, which if you're right. working with an editor, you know, that minimum, minimum two weeks, but more realistic is going to be a month. And that's yeah. if you have booked in advance. Right. And and I, I was and just going to say, <laughs> that's when like they can pick up the book. I'm waiting. Right. I, I got a yeah. spot in January. Like, and you can't change that, right? You could go look for another yeah. editor, but yeah, yeah, just factoring all that in. So, and like, for me, you know, I work with the same editor with pretty much every book. And so I'll reach out when I get, you know, maybe halfway through the book or two thirds of the way through the book to go ahead and and book based off of when I think I'm going to finish. Now, a lot of indie authors will edit their own books and that's, you know, I personally can't do that, but I know that that one saves money and it might save time. I don't know if it actually saves time, (laughs) but needless to say, there are things that other authors do that I don't think work for me. Right. So, but I thought about, you know, to be more successful as an indie author, it's like, I've had this debate of like, okay, should I write shorter books to be able to put more books out sooner? Should I put less planning time? Should I do less to put out more? But then I'm like, can I really do that? Because Mm. I know if I have spent the time coming up with these characters and this world that I have fallen in love with, because I have to be in love with it to spend that amount of time on it. Right, right. If I've done that, I want to do it the best that I possibly can. And so my best is probably going to be an average of three to four months writing time. And then of course, there's going to be the additional months that are going to be, you know, editing. And also because I'm a newer author, you know, and I have less than 3000 followers on Instagram to put this in a perspective. So I'm a newer author. So for me, it's important to have lead up time to a book launch 
to get early reviews and get the marketing and do things like this. Whereas the author that I was mentioning before who puts out so many books a year, she's got 10,000 plus followers. Right. All of her posts are going to get an average of several hundred likes. So for her, she doesn't really do pre-orders. She will write a book within a month, edit it and put it out the next month. And, and yeah, and, and people buy it, you yeah. know, and yeah, they're waiting and, for it, right? Yeah. It's just a built in. It's, it's just amazing. And I would love to be like that one day. I just don't see myself able to put it out as quickly, yeah. but the people who have stuck with me from the beginning, they have stuck with me because they love my storytelling and they love the amount of effort that goes into my books. And so I'm just going to try to remain hopeful mm -hmm. that more and more people will see that over the years. And hopefully one day I'll be at a place where even if I'm putting out one to two books a year, like they're going to support me and love my work for what it is. Right. I, I, I love that. And I think that is what most indie authors need to hear is it, it is kind of that uh, marathon idea instead of race, you know, you it's hard not to, but we really shouldn't compare ourselves to people who are in a different place, who have been around longer or whatever is different, right? Like yeah. they're able to do that. I'm also, I'm a much slower writer than ideas that can lightning flash into my head. <laughs> you know, like I have notes on all the books that I, I have thought about, but not quite written. Um, but I think whether you're planning it or whether you dive in I did an experiment and dove in right away and that didn't work out either because things happened along the yeah. writing line and I had to go back and toss some, you know, so yes. that time's going to be needed no, no matter what. And um, I think your advice is amazing because what people need to do is find their way of doing it and then constantly remind themselves that's great for them but this is my way. And like you said, the yeah. readers are looking for what, for your voice, for your comfort zone, for your love of the characters. And it's not really worth exchanging that, right? Just to get a book out quicker. Like yeah. And, and when you think about it, it's like, you know, there are so many authors and so many books, especially in a subgenre like mafia romance, um, even if I were to scale back what I do and publish, you know, multiple books a year, which by the way, I don't think would be sustainable for me. Mm -hmm. Um, so even if I were to do that though, let's say I were to, you know, have to take a break and not put out, you know, a book as often or only go back to only one book a year. There are so many authors in that field that I don't even know if my readers would miss me mm -hmm. because they would have so many other people fulfilling that need, especially if I'm, you know, essentially shrinking my storytelling ability to fit on a tighter schedule. My books are no more unique than the next person's. Right. But right. if I continue to remain true to myself, you know, I know that I have a unique storytelling ability. So that's what I have readers a year later, you know, when the poetry collection was announced, they were like, oh, I was hoping it would be like, you know, something to do with your mafia book or whatever. And it's been a year since that book came out. So right, right. the fact that they're still in love with that book means a lot to me yeah yeah and I, I i love that they are loyal to you and they this sort of gives other authors listening permission that you can always come back right like maybe this side project or this very personal project is something needed right now but that they're always they're, your readers are always looking for another book right so whatever book you dive into next you're going to come out with it it's going to be great you're going to love it and your readers are going to be like great yeah <laughs> another and, one to read and there is a difference i think between readers who want what you're writing and readers who want a book by you mm. and so for me 
I truly feel connected to the readers who want a book that's by me. The yeah. people who are going to read my work regardless of what it is. Those are your true readers. Right. And so, you know, I'm really thankful for them. And I think that, you know, as long as you're true to yourself, you will find those people. Yes. Yes. And I, I do think you're right because those are the going to be the readers that are going to pick up the poetry book as well, because they want yeah. to know more about you as an author and romance readers are mostly women, right? At least yes. a good chunk of them. Right. So I'm sure that there will be lots of poems. All of us can relate to um, <laughs> as it goes with dating, love, loss, right? All of those things. So I think you're right to focus on the readers who want to read it because you wrote it more than anything. Because yeah, there's a lot of every genre out there. Yes. <laughs> there are a lot of books. Um, so this podcast is uh, recorded a bit earlier, but it's going out January 9th. Can you tell us, um, is your book out? Can people find it? It's the new year 2024. If they want to start it with some romance. Um, and some poetry, where can they go? Yes. So by the time this interview comes out, um, I still have love to give will be available to purchase on Amazon. Um, again, by Emily A. Myers. Um, it would have just come out on January 4th, and it's going to be the perfect way to start your new year. If you're interested in healing some past heartbreak or you're going through a dating journey or you need help figuring out what kind of love you want in your life. Um, I wrote this book basically over the span of an entire year and so I think it's the perfect way to start your new year and if you're interested in any sort of romantic suspense or mafia romance you will find that on Amazon as well. Under Emily A. Myers as well? Yes. Okay. Yes. So you stuck with your name. You want people to know you as you. Yes. I'm going to be old fashioned in that way. And I'm going to own every word that I say. That's <laughs> awesome. I love that. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Emily, for coming on. We will have the links in the show notes below for everyone to go, go out and start your new year with a book of poetry. I think this is great. I think um, even if you're not going to read it, it's another creative way to inspire you as you dive into your own writing. So thank you so much, Emily, for coming and talking to us today. Thank you.